Hello, everyone. My name is Jamie Lee. I'm an executive coach for smart women who hate office politics. I help smart women get promoted, get better paid without throwing anyone under the bus. And how do I do this? I combine brain based tools with practical career strategy and practical self advocacy skills so that my clients can advocate for their career growth, even if they hate office politics and they don't have to throw anyone under the bus. Today, we're going to to talk about how to get started. It's January. It's the third week of January. And in the eastern seaboard of the United States, we we're having an Arctic storm. It's snowing quite a bit here in New York City. And we're getting the year started. I know it already feels like it's been a whirlwind, right? January got, you know, starting with a roar. And we're like, all right, we're, in, we're already in the thick of it. Even so, I feel any time is a good time for us to do a smart start. So I am going to share my screen and uh, walk you through the slides I have prepared. All right. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me know if you have trouble seeing the slides. Otherwise, I'll assume people can see it. It's it's good. We're going to rock and roll, yeah? Yes, awesome. Looks great. Thank you, Michelle. All right, so let's get started. Here's what we're going to do. I will tell you a little bit about me, my experience, my journey with setting goals, and Let's let's take stock of how you tend to relate to goals, whether they're career goals or not. And I want to walk you through different types of goal getters so that you could have a greater sense of awareness as you move yourself through these five steps. And then I'm going to walk you through a mental rehearsal. Like this is this is a tool that every single one of my clients absolutely love and it helps you be able to quiet the itty bitty shitty committee and visualize or imagine yourself having the goal achieved or taking action to get that goal achieved and then if there is a fit for your needs then I'll tell you about my one-on-one -on -one coaching offer let's get started let's talk about failure because I think I don't think I'm the only one when I started coaching several years ago one of my best clients said, I don't want to set goals. I don't want to set goals because if I set goals, I get obsessed with them. If I set goals, I'm afraid of failing at them. If I set goals, I'm so disappointed that I don't achieve them. So I don't want to set goals. So first of all, I just want to acknowledge that I myself, I have failed at several goals myself, right? And here are two of them. I failed at negotiating my starting salary as a hedge fund analyst. That was like a lifetime ago, but I once found out I was making 50% of the going market range as a hedge fund analyst. And I thought, wow, I really need to change this. I need to turn this around. That was the moment I realized I got to learn how to advocate, to negotiate, to communicate better, even if I hate office politics, right? And I want you to um, stay tuned because there's going to be a, another webinar coming soon, uh, maybe in a month or so, where I'm going to support y'all in practicing, in in really like taking action and practicing advocating and negotiating for yourself. Because I realized then that's what I didn't have. I just didn't have as much practice negotiating for myself. So I failed at it because I hadn't anticipated that I needed to negotiate. I hadn't practiced. I didn't have an action plan. And also, most recently, this was about a year ago, I started reading this book written by David Goggins. He's a former Navy SEAL, and his thing is about being like really hard and working out all the time and running all the, you know, ultra marathons. And I was like, oh, I I, I got to run fast like David Goggins. I got to I gotta do something. I got to set a goal of running a 5K and I want to run it really fast. And then I completely failed at it. Because, you know, I there are many reasons, but um, I think the key reason that I failed at running that 5K, what happened was I got sick and I couldn't even show up to the race. It's because 
I wasn't doing something that was truly aligned with who I am. I was, I didn't set a goal that's actually humane and kind to me. I set a goal because I thought I was supposed to be a certain way. Yeah. So here are the lessons I've learned from having set some goals and failed at them. Have I thought through an action plan? Have I prepared? Have I practiced ahead of time? Right. Those are the reasons why I failed at my, uh, uh, the uh, compensation negotiation early in my career because I hadn't thought through an action plan. I hadn't prepared. I hadn't practiced. And the second goal, I failed because I was trying to strive to meet somebody else's expectations, meet somebody else's shoulds or supposed to, as opposed to doing it something that actually is aligned with who I really am and what I really want. And so with that in mind, here's a goal, some goals that I have met. I have met my goal of helping smart women get promoted to chief operating officer, COO, executive director, partner positions. That was a goal I set for myself like 11 years ago. I, I had this idea one day. I'm like, I want to I wanna go help women become bolder, braver, better paid, and promoted into leadership, leadership positions. And I made that goal happen. And I made it happen because I, I let it be a, a, a long-term goal, right? And I, and I set that goal uh, in, a, in alignment with what I truly want, with a sense of purpose that I have. And I also ran two half marathons very slowly. That's a goal I have met and achieved. And again, I prepared for them. I trained for them. And I met myself where I am and I let myself go slow. I'm like, I don't need to be hard like David Goggins. That's not who I am. I, I, I can go slow. And as long as I allow myself to be kind to myself and, you know, just, just do it at my own pace, I can achieve any goal I set my mind to. So that's my story with goals. And with that said, I want to... I want to ask you, everyone here, <laughs> I'm curious for you, like Laura, Christina, Michelle, uh, Chris, uh, Anna, Jeanette, like when you think about goals you have set, what comes to mind in terms of goals you have failed at and you learned from having failed them? And what are some goals you have met because it was really aligned with who you are, what you want? and you gave it some forethought. So I, I'd love to hear from y'all. Like, tell me, what are some goals that you have met? Have you met the goal of running a marathon because you gave yourself time to prepare, to train? Yeah. So I, I'd love for you to uh, put those into the chat if you want to share. Oh my gosh, Jeanette finished her goal of visiting all 50 states. That is really, really cool. Amazing. All right, coach certification, yeah. <laughs> I'm at daily 10,000 steps, all right, good to know. Okay, some of y'all don't set goals. Master's degree, uh, your book, you failed at finishing your book many times. But Anna, I, I do know that although you failed at finishing your book many times, you ultimately did finish a book right? I, I so appreciate having you um, share that with us because one of the uh, one of the best quotes that I repeat again and again to all of my clients is that success is built on a pile of failures, right? Success is built on a pile of failures. Uh, found a pub publisher and made a contract. I reached my goal. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So with that in mind, yeah, good job, Jerry. She met her goal of negotiating a salary increase for your for yourself with the help from resources I shared. Thank you, Jerry. I I'm so I'm so proud of you. Uh that is really, really awesome. Okay. Um okay, where am I? I'm just going to ask you this question. How do you think you tend to relate to goals in general? Yeah. And I'm asking you that question because I want you to think about like in the past when I have set goals and I 
didn't meet them or I did meet them, like, how did I relate to that goal? How did I think about it? How do I react to it? How do I respond to it? Yeah. And with this question in mind, yeah, I want to walk you through the four types of goal getters that I see in my coaching practice again and again and again. So these are archetypes. Archetypes meaning, you know, it's not like a hard and fast rule. It, it's, it doesn't mean that you're always in this one bucket. Like sometimes different contexts bring up different archetypes. So you might be one archetype in one area of your career and your life, and then you might be a different type of archetype depending on the situation. But uh, I have to say, I... I end up coaching quite a few of relentless overachievers who, you know, their catchphrase, their motto is hard work is its own reward, right? You like external uh, motivation. Like if you set a goal of getting something done, you focus on it relentlessly. Sometimes you forget to slow down. Sometimes you forget to slow down, uh, enough to eat and to give yourself rest because you're like, I love getting it done. And when you're really good at what you're, do, uh, you're doing, it feels like I, I just want to reward myself with even more work, right? And then there's a self-directed rebel. There's some people who don't like goals or extrinsic motivation at all. Like it has to be their way or no way. Or if you do set goals, you want to experiment with the so-called rules, yeah? And then there's a meticulous perfectionist, a type I coach quite a bit as well. I'll take as long as I need to get it done just right, right? You, you hesitate to set a goal because you're like, well, have I thought through everything? Have I thought through all the contingencies? Have I thought through what can go wrong ahead of time before I commit to it because I don't want to fail? And once I set that goal, I want to make sure I give as much time as I need to to each step just right. Yeah. And sometimes when you do this, your quality of work is really great, but you have a tendency to miss deadlines or you miss deadlines you give yourself. And finally, there's the accountability seeker. Accountability seeker is somebody who has trouble meeting goals that they set for themselves, like internal expectations you have trouble meeting. But if it's an external expectation, if somebody else is expecting you to get it done, it's like the first thing that you do in the morning. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to share... I can see myself being a relentless overachiever, especially when it comes to my career. Uh, but sometimes I'm a self-directed rebel in terms of how I like to have fun and enjoy my life and my free time. Um, I can be a meticulous perfectionist, but then usually I'm more of an accountability seeker when it, you know, when it comes to getting like very specific things done. And so I'm curious when you see these four archetypes. Which of these archetypes do you think uh, is the most predominant one for you in terms of your career goals? I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. Self-directed rebel. All right, Christina, good job. It's good to have that awareness, right? It's good to have that awareness that like, yeah, if it's not truly aligned with, you know, my personal values, I'm probably not going to work towards that goal relentless and everyone knows it yes Jeanette you're B and D. you're a, both a rebel and an accountability seeker okay yeah me too I can be an accountability seeker too yeah yes accountability seeker at home and relentless at work yes yes awesome awesome so it's good to have that awareness and here's the pitfall especially especially when we are socialized as women, when we are relentless, when we're self-directed, when we're meticulous and when we'd like to seek accountability, we end up creating almost like a love-hate relationship with goals. Because let's think about it, when you're a relentless overachiever, you're either working so hard or you're burnt out, 
when you're self-directed rebel, sometimes you end up judging yourself. You're like, oh, why can't I just set goals like everyone else, right? And that can also happen with the meticulous perfectionist. You could end up beating yourself up because you're compelled to do things just right, but it takes you longer. And then you're like, well, so-and-so had in accounts or, you know, she, she or they are so fast at getting it done. Why can't I get it done fast? Like her, like them, right? And so I think um, knowing this about us and knowing how these tendencies can uh, create this love-hate relationship with goals, like we want to sort of reframe, reframe how we think about goals in general, right? Because we live in a culture you know, you, you go to LinkedIn or you go to your social media feed and people are celebrating their achievements. And it's so easy to compare and despair and feel insecure, self-doubt about achieving your goals, right? So, so with that in mind, I, I think it, it's super helpful for all types to consider this reframe. Practice or focusing on the process rather than the achievement, right? So it's like we're turning that uh, cultural narrative on its head. Instead of focusing on that, on that image of a marathoner crossing the finish line, they're going, yeah. It's like, what if we focused on the daily practice of showing up, you know, at 6 a.m. or at 5 a.m. when everyone's sleeping and they're tying their shoelaces that are going out for a run, right? It was that daily practice that made the achievement inevitable. So what if all of us, all types of us, right? Focus more on the process and the practice rather than the end goal, rather than the outcome. So here's what that looks like for each type. For the relentless overachiever, let's cultivate the practice of slowing down to consider the bigger reason why the over we love to win we love to get things done but can we also slow down to consider the bigger perspective of why we're going after these particular wins why they matter what's the purpose yeah and for the self-directed rebel let's cultivate the practice of only setting goals that truly align with what you want, what is meaningful for you, right? There's, the world is noisy. For so many people telling you how you're supposed to be, what, you're, what you should do, right? But if you're a self-directed rebel, inevitably, if you set a goal that isn't aligned with what you really want, you're going to, you know, not be set up for success. Right. So let's cultivate the habit of like checking inward, checking with ourselves. What do we truly want? Yes. Christina says it's all about practice. Uh, yeah. And it's OK if you're achieving some goals and failing at others. That is also part of the practice. Right. Like uh, setting goals, going after them. And not meeting them is also part of the practice of, okay, let's evaluate, let's come back and let's check in with ourselves. What are we learning? What do we want to do differently next time so that we can continue to make progress? The meticulous perfectionist, let's cultivate the practice of acknowledging that your 85%, your B level work is most people's 97%. It's most people's A+. plus. I, I had a client when I told her I want you to think about like what if your B level work is good enough and she's like oh no. <laughs> it's like I can't do that I can't do B level work <laughs> that, that was um that was like a strong reaction but I'm like but what if you did what if you allowed yourself to continue to you know think about what if this isn't good enough I can let it go I can I can you know submit it, I can hit publish, I can hit send. I don't have to agonize over it for another three hours about syntax and perfect word choice. <laughs> yeah. And for the accountability seeker, let's cultivate the 
practice of finding your tribe, your community, people that you know, like, and trust, and then update them. In a sense, use your tribe to hold yourself accountable. Okay, so I see some questions. I will come back to the questions, okay? I will definitely come back to the questions. I have a lot of content, so I want to make sure we get to them. I want to make sure we get to the practice, and then I'll come back to the questions. All right, so everyone got the workbook I sent them, right? And if you haven't, feel free to email me directly, jamie at jamieleecoach.com. Uh, here's my uh, email domain, jamie at jamieleecoach.com. Uh, in the workbook, I give you very specific questions to dive deeper into each of these five steps to help you get unstuck, okay? So the first step is start from the end. And I think especially if you are a meticulous perfectionist, especially if you are a relentless overachiever, you may want to bypass this step because your brain, all our brains do this, all, all our brains would like would go like, Okay, what's the next immediate step? What do I need to do now? Yeah, but we're going to zoom out, right? Zoom out to a broader perspective. How do you want to feel at the end, at the December, at the, uh, late December, 2024, because you decided, you proactively decided how you wanted your ear to be, how you wanted to show up, and what obstacles you wanted to move through. And what would achieving those goals do for you and do for your entire life? So in the workbook, I suggest you give yourself at least five, 10 minutes of uninterrupted, just brainstorming, doodling, thinking time to dream on paper. And the reason for that is because when we're professionals, when we're busy working or trying to achieve career wins, it's so easy to get carried away by the day-to-day -day and not be able to dream, right? We used to dream all the time when we were young. And now that we're professional adult women, we're like, dreaming? I don't have the luxury to do that. But what if you can give yourself five, 10 minutes? That's it. Five, 10 minutes. We all have five, 10 minutes. Yeah. So start from the end. And then from there, you're going to pick a goal that actually you want, right? It's not some like supposed to or uh, something that makes you feel sort of constricted because, oh, I should be doing this, right? It's not that, but it's like when I think about getting that done, I feel, oh, I feel a little expansive. Yeah. And then from there, walk yourself through the SMART framework. Make it super specific, make that goal really measurable, make it attainable. And if not, ask yourself what help, what resources might I need to ask for to make it happen? Make it relevant to the people who, who will be uh, stakeholders or who are directly uh, involved. And if, if you are a self-directed rebel, I would say make the goal really relevant to what you genuinely care about. You, you would be the number one stakeholder here. And then set a deadline because action plans, they love timelines. Yeah. And then from there, now we're going to write it down. According to research done at uh, Dominican University, by Gail Matthews, she found that when you write your goal down, you're 42% more likely to achieve them. I, I write my goal down every single day. I shared with my newsletter list, I met an eight-figure self-made CEO. Her name is Corinne Crabtree. And her secret to success, she wrote her goal down every single day. And also, as you write that goal down, remind yourself, why? What is the bigger purpose? And who do you need to become? How do you need to change on the inside? What would you need to think about you habitually? What would you need to feel on purpose? What are new actions might you need to take to achieve that goal? Okay. And then from there, we're going to engage the prefrontal cortex, right? The most evolved 
human part of our brains, right? Some, some people say that the amygdala and the emotional brain, the limbic system, right? That's more of the primitive brain, the more ancient part of our brains, but the prefrontal cortex is the more evolved, the, the latest addition to the human supercomputer. And so we're gonna engage the prefrontal cortex by anticipating, we're gonna plan ahead for things not going the way we want them to, because that's just life, right? That's just how things are. So we're going to accept that and we're gonna plan ahead. What obstacles might you anticipate for achieving your goal? So in the workbook that I shared with everyone, I'm just gonna take a sip. I gave an example of one of my clients who wanted to get promoted uh, within the finance department. And so she thought about, okay, here are some obstacles. Um, there could be some um, changes at the company that I can't change, that I can't control. Um, there might be some changes that my manager initiates that I can't do anything about. Or I might experience so much self-doubt um, that I don't take action. Okay, Lauren uh, is asking about the workbook. The workbook was emailed to you ahead of the session, ahead of today. So look for the email that says free gift inside. And if you don't see it in your inbox, email me, I will send you the link directly. And you know what? In fact, you're asking about it. So that means you don't have it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop the share for a moment. And I'm going to walk everyone through the workbook, so you can see what's in it. All right. Yeah, so here's the workbook. And here's where I suggest you give yourself five, 10 minutes to really daydream out loud on paper, doodle. <laughs> what would make this year amazing? And then here's where you can take yourself, take a goal, and then work it step-by-step step through the SMART framework, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant. And here's the example of my client that I was talking about. This is a, um, somebody who wanted to get promoted. And so her goal is to get promoted and she realizes the biggest stakeholder is the VP of finance, Pat, who was their skip, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I misspoke she realized the real stakeholder is the CFO, who is the skip level boss, uh, not her direct manager, the VP of finance, right? And so then I asked her, okay, what do you think they most care about? And if you were to get promoted, how would that align with what the stakeholder, key stakeholder most cares about, right? And she said, well, yeah, of course it's aligned because when I'm in a bigger capacity, I could make bigger impact in reducing the company's debt load, uh, protecting the balance sheet and improving the stock price. And so then we thought through you know, very tactically, how could she advocate for her promotion in a way that signals that she understands and what she wants is aligned with the company growth, with what the CFO most cares about. Right. So that's the example I was talking about. And here's where I suggest everyone take a moment to write down your goal. You can do it right now if you want. Right. Or you can take time after this session to really give yourself a little bit more time to think it even deeper into why you want to achieve this goal. Right. This is something that relentless overachievers and also self-directed rebels you definitely want to think it through like why is it so meaningful for me and what will it mean to you when you have achieved that goal right and this is a really fun question what ways are you already living the outcome of this goal right and what will be different specifically tangibly when you have achieved the goal and how will you need to change? What will you need to change in terms of how you habitually think, feel, and do so that you become the person who has realized this goal, right? So notice the past tense. When you imagine yourself having realized the goal and it's something you've already done, it's already in the past, how do you imagine you will feel 
and how you will be as a person. Okay, so from there, we're going to uh, organize each action step in sequence from start to finish. And it's okay if you don't know everything like this for the perfectionist. If you don't know exactly how, right? And there's so much uncertainty, that's all right. Just broad strokes, just at high level. You know, I, I would need to do, um, if you were writing a book, I would first need to write a first draft. I would need to get it ed get it edited. I would need to find a publisher, right? At high level is good enough. We're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for the practice of thinking ahead. And then from there, let's think about what obstacles might come up. Yeah. And this is where I think mental rehearsal and visualizing, imagining the future version of you, super, super useful, right? You could also imagine who are people who has, oh, who are the people who have already gotten a goal like this completed? Maybe it's somebody you know, maybe it's a mentor, maybe it's somebody you look up to. Imagine what do you think they thought? What do you imagine they did to overcome those goals? Okay, so I'm going to stop the share because uh, that's, that's the meat of the workbook. And now we can go into mental rehearsal. All right. Okay. So with that said, uh, let me share the screen one more time. The slides one more time. Screen sharing is paused. What happened? <laughs> Let me try this one more time. Here it is. Okay. No, you're not seeing my slides, right? What did I do? Not yet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, this this is definitely an obstacle I could have thought ahead of, right? <laughs> Here it is. Bear with me for a moment. Okay, we're back. Now you can see it. So with that said, Great, thank you, Michelle. With that said, I wanna invite all of you to practice mental rehearsal with me. Now, some of you have thought through your goals. Some of you are feeling a little bit of uh, maybe inner conflict about your goal. And some of you have thought about one specific action step, one small action step that you would need to take towards your goal. Now, all of that is good enough for you to do mental rehearsal. And here's why we do mental rehearsal in my coaching practice. It helps to rewire your brain, right? This is, I'm not, I'm not just saying that. Like neuroscientists have proven that when you imagine yourself taking action or when you imagine yourself having a new result, there's new neural connection created. And this new neural connection, it's like as if it's your reality. In other words, your brain doesn't really know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. And when you have that new neural connection, it helps to align your subconscious with your conscious goals, right? Think about how powerful the subconscious is. Your subconscious has you breathing, digesting, existing, you know, processing, understanding, even without you like, consciously willing yourself to do it. Yeah. And your subconscious is so powerful, especially if you're a self-directed rebel or somebody who is an accountability seeker. And you're like, oh, why? Why? I know I really want to get this done. Why can't I get it done? Right. It's like there is a subconscious that's about 98 percent of your actual you know, cognitive powers. Right. Whereas two percent, the conscious <laughs> is relatively small to the subconscious. So we're going to align that 98% with the 2% that is conscious, you know, and when I say conscious, you understand that's the part of you that's like 
mentally thinking right now, right? And so what happens is you can quiet the itty bitty shitty committee in your brain. It helps to increase focus, increase a sense of calm groundedness, which leads to confidence. And this mental rehearsal that I'm going to walk you through, I have seen in my coaching practice, it is effective, effective on all types of goal getters. So with that said, what can you expect? Here's what you can expect in this mental rehearsal exercise. You're going to just feel relaxed. You're going to notice a narrowing of attention. You're going to notice quieting of the critical faculty, otherwise the, da, 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 the chatter in your brain. And you're going to just engage your imagination. That's all we're going to do, right? When high-performance athletes do visualization, they call it imagery, right? All they're doing is they're engaging in their imagination to see in sensory-rich detail, see themselves, feel themselves wearing that swimsuit, you know, feeling the water in the pool, smelling the chlorine, right? Tasting the, the taste of victory. <laughs> I'm thinking about Michael Phelps, who does mental rehearsal, okay? So with that said, now I'm going to stop uh, the screen share one more time. Now I want to invite everyone to um, sit down. If you're not already sitting down, remember this is this part of this is relaxation, progressive relaxation. So I'm just going to invite everyone to sit down with their feet flat on the ground. And if you are on the road or if you're walking outside, I would invite you to pull over or sit down where you can just take a rest for five minutes. It's going to take five minutes. Okay. So now um, I'm just going to trust everyone is following along with me. Yeah. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to put your palms up like this. And now palms up and place them on your lap. Just a relaxed, almost like a meditative pose. Yeah. Now let's take two deep breaths. Deep breath in to the belly. And exhale twice as long. So have you settle and be grounded into this moment. And I invite you to close your eyes if that's okay, if you can do that where you are. Now again, one more breath, deep breath into the belly and exhale twice as long. And now simply bring your attention to your right open palm. You don't have to do anything. You just simply bring your attention to your right open palm and just notice what's there. And now bring your attention to the inside of your right elbow, to your right shoulder, to your left shoulder, to your left elbow, to your left open palm. And now to your right palm, your right elbow, your right shoulder, your left shoulder, your left elbow, your left palm, and again, your right palm, your right elbow, your right shoulder, your left shoulder, your left elbow, your left palm. And now in this slightly relaxed state, I invite you to see yourself being the change that you want to be. And if you like, you can even imagine a movie screen in your mind's eye and see yourself taking the action that you want to be taking, feeling the way you want to be feeling, to be satisfied, calm, courageous. And if that feels good, you can even imagine yourself floating right into that movie screen so you could really try on for size and see what you see. Feel what you feel, hear what you hear, taste what you taste. And now in a moment, but not yet, I'll have you come out of that movie screen, but you'll be able to bring back with you all the good feelings that you need to feel your action from here on out. So whenever you're ready, 
you can wiggle your toes, you wiggle your fingers, maybe you roll your shoulders back, maybe take a big stretch and come back. All right, I trust that you followed along. I'd love to know what that was like for you. Let me know in the chat. How'd that go? <laughs> Stress-free meditation experience. <laughs> it was awesome, but I had to go to the toilet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Life happens. I like the feeling of energy it evoked. Fun and easy way to visualize my future self. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So... Now, yes, I, you know, I would encourage you to, you know, you can do the progressive relaxation or you can just simply relax and again, just in, engage your imagination and see yourself taking action, relaxing, but also quite interesting to reflect on what I saw for myself. Awesome. Awesome. I'd love to know what did you saw? What did you see for yourself? <laughs> Let me know. Okay, so as you are reflecting on that experience, um, oh, Anna says confidence and boldness with love and a smile for others. Beautiful, so good, so good. So as you're feeling that sense of relaxation, as you're feeling that sense of confidence, ask yourself, okay, what's the tiny, smallest next step forward from here? Yeah. And I'd love to know, what do you think? What do you think is the tiny, smallest next step forward for you? What comes to mind? Let me know in the chats. Yeah, standing on a big stage with my published book, supporting the audience to care for themselves. Beautiful, Laura. Yes. Yes. So as you see that vision, as you see that image, and you feel what that's like, what is the tiniest, tiniest next step forward? Lauren says, calm on the outside, but itching to take on projects that push my creative boundaries. Yes, there's like this energy, there's this desire, this creative force that's inside of you, Lauren. That's gorgeous. So as you feel that, what is the tiniest, smallest action step? Okay, Anna says, good posture. So uh, I don't know if you mean, um, I, I don't know if you mean, uh, sitting with good posture okay nicole says putting words to my goals kate says i think i missed some of the key questions in the meditation when i got interrupted in the middle okay so kate um you could watch the replay but basically what i asked was simply see yourself being the change that you want to be and if it feels good imagine a movie screen in your mind and see yourself doing the things that you want to do, feeling the way you want to feel, seeing the things you want to see. That's it. Okay, Anna says walking, sitting, standing up. Right. Maybe, maybe for some of us, the best way to get started on our goals is a teeny tiny shift in how we hold ourselves. Yeah. And how we sit, how we walk, how we stand how we talk to ourselves. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I know somebody had a question earlier on, so I'm going to go back to the chat. Uh, I think it was Jerry who said, I struggle with the rebelliousness with some work related goals that are not in alignment with who I am and never will be. How do I manage that better? I think uh, for you, again, like let's think about the practice of using that SMART framework. What are very specific things that you don't want to do because it is not in alignment with who you are and never will be, right? And then you want to think about, okay, 
if this is not really aligned with who I am, what I want to do or I want to be, what are some actions, what are some strategies to address that? Could I delegate? Could I uh, put those things aside? Could I have conversations with people who can help me get resources so that it can be, you know, reassigned to somebody else? Yeah. And you could also think about what is the true desire I have inside of me that wants to be expressed? Right? Maybe it's rebelliousness or maybe it's because there's something that wants to be expressed, something that wants to be felt that isn't being addressed, that isn't uh, being allowed to have the space right, to come out. And so then you might want to ask yourself, okay, what is that I truly want to do? If I were to allow an aspect of myself that is feeling rebellious, if I were to imagine that she can have the stage for a full page and you just let that rebellious side of you be heard, right? What does she genuinely want? And maybe that's something that um, you want to address in your career. And maybe it's something that you can address outside of your career. Yeah. So Again, like think, getting, first of all, getting really, really specific on what it is that I don't want to do and what are strategies to uh, overcome or address that, right? And, you know, can I ask for help? And also, if you're feeling rebellious, what's not being allowed to uh, be expressed? And allow that side of you to be heard, even if it's just pen on paper. Okay. So... You're welcome, Jerry. Jerry says great thinking points. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Kate says, I was imagining engaging my network. How would I do targeted reach out and how I would communicate with individuals I want to connect with and get advice or help from? For a larger picture, I picture the kind of creative, healthy environment I want to create that leads to delivering helpful, well thought out technical projects. Amazing. Great. I love that, Kate, for you. So good. Okay. So any other questions um, before we proceed? All right, we'll proceed then. So I have to find my slides again. <laughs> okay, here it is. All right. Okay. So I want to share with you that in my one-on-one -on -one coaching practice, I provide individualized support that you need to see your goals, the goals that feel genuinely good, goals that feel like, yes, this is what I really want in my life and my career all the way through from identifying what you really and truly want to actionable strategy, problem solving, all the way to execution, right? And we're going to couple that with tactical self-advocacy, leadership, and communication skills with tools to rewire your brain so you can become the leader you want to be. And if that sounds like something you want, Here's how to get started. You can book your free hour-long Blueprint to Confidence session. This is a consultation. It's free. It's hour-long one-on-one with me over Zoom or over phone. And in this consultation, we're going to do an intake. I'll walk you step-by-step. Step. First, I'll ask you about the results you have in your career that uh, you want to change. And then I'll walk you step-by-step step through custom process tools that will be custom fit to your specific needs and your situation so that you can see how you can create results that you want in your career, in your life. So the place to go is this link, jamieleecoach.com apply. And this is where uh, you can, you know, I'm just going to click on it so you can see what happens. All right. show you exactly where you land when you click on that link because you're like what happens when i click on that link here's where you land when you click on that link right you're going to land here where you can immediately book that consultation and you're also going to learn 
more details, in-depth details about my coaching practice, my philosophy, um, exactly what you can expect inside the coaching practice, um, how you're going to learn how to advocate for yourself, negotiate for career advancement, how you're going to learn how to lead, manage up, down, and across the food chain without sacrificing more of your personal time. So you have energy and bandwidth available to navigate the growth that you want in your career, in your life. So this is where you can go to book that free consultation with me. So that said, does anyone else have other questions? Here's what you should know about my coaching practice. What we do is we marry that, uh, that brain-based tools. I call them self-directed neuroplasticity, right? All you had to do was sit, relax, focus, right? And imagine things, visualize things in a way that was aligned with your goals, with your desire for growth. And then we take that and we marry it with specific action strategies. That's what we do. Okay. So unless anyone have any other questions, I want to summarize. Uh, you're welcome, Christina. You're welcome. So in summary, uh, here's what you're going to do. You're going to allow yourself, give yourself space and time, you know, whether that is sitting down with that workbook and a cup of coffee, a pen and paper, or even your notes app, right? Thinking through, brainstorming, thinking about what do I want to achieve? What do I genuinely want to achieve? And then thinking very specifically, how do I quantify that progress? How do I take action steps? What obstacles might I imagine? And then you engage your brain to come up with strategies to overcome them, right? And mentally rehearse, visualize yourself having achieved the success. Visualize yourself taking concrete action to achieve that goal, yeah? And from there, you're just going to notice there's going to be less noise in your mind when you go to take that action. When you go to take that action, it's just going to feel a little bit more aligned, a little bit more easier, a little bit more confident, right? And so this is something that I do in my coaching practice every single day. The tool that I just walked you through is something every single one of my clients absolutely love. This is one of several brain-based tools that I help my clients uh, uh, practice and use so that they can get promoted, better paid, even if they hate office politics, right? So that they can build their confidence to take the lead, take charge in their own careers. You're so welcome, Christina. You're so welcome, Nicole. You're so welcome, other Nicole. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions? You're welcome, Anastasia. Yay, yes, this was fantastic. I'm so glad to hear that. Okay. So I, I want to share with you, um, I, I, t I tend to like walking my clients through exactly the same framework around the beginning of the year or when we start coaching, right? So that we get clear on what we want to achieve and we can plan ahead for making it happen. I just walked a client through this and you're going to hear about this in the newsletter that uh, probably landed in your inbox. But I had a client, we walked through exactly this framework just a few weeks ago, right? And at first she was like, you know, I just have this vague desire of, I, I think I want to move up. I think I want to move up in my career. So then we walked through the SMART framework. Okay, what does that mean specifically? How would we measure that success, 
right? What would need to happen? What are the action steps she would need to take? What are obstacles she can anticipate? How can she overcome those obstacles, right? And by doing that, she came up with a very specific and concrete plan that she wants to get a 15% pay raise. She wants to grow her direct reports, the, the team of direct reports, so that she can be less in the weeds and more engaged at high level strategic thinking. And lo and behold, because she thought this through, I think things started clicking. Uh, Lauren, if you want to schedule a discovery session with me, uh, what do you need to prep? It's all in the, uh, once you book that consultation, it, I will ask you very specific questions about, you know, what it is that you want to achieve. Like, what are you proud of? So all you have to do is follow the prompt in that Calendly link. So um, you don't have to do any homework <laughs> for me. Um, if you want to come check out my website, you want to come check out my podcast, I'll share with you very specific um, client interviews so that you can have a sense of, oh, this is what's possible for me as well. So again, here's exactly where you go. Here's where you go to book your free consultation and get all the answers to questions about working with me one-on-one. -on -one. And if you wanted to learn more about my coaching practice, uh, you can come on over to my website, jamieleecoach.com. The link is right there in the chat, right? And you'll be able to check out client results. You'll be able to uh, check out past interviews with my clients. Uh, you'll be able to check out my blog and you'll be able to book that consultation with me. Totally free. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, I was telling the story about my client, right? So I was telling you that she thought through the steps and then she got to give a presentation to some of the top performers at her company. And she started getting attention from leaders, from higher ups. And here's something that she had never done before. She had never gone to these meetings with higher ups with a request, with a specific request for what she wants in her career. But because she had thought through her goals, right? She thought through the SMART framework, she anticipated the obstacles, she visualized her future self. And because she did that, this time around, when she got one-on-one -on -one meetings with these higher-ups, with the, with the executives, she knew she can ask for resources. She, this time she knew how to articulate her value, the value of her contributions, and how to frame for the vision of her growth that's aligned with the company's growth vision, right? So, you know, she's going to be able to go in there and say, hey, I'm doing this work, and here's how I envision this we can grow. And so right now, I'm looking to grow my team of, you know, high-achieving um, superstars so that we can do it at scale. And this is going to help her, but not only that, it's going to help the decision makers. It's going to help the decision makers who want to help high performing, you know, high achievers. They want to help high potential leaders, right? And they need to hear what you want. They need to hear that you have a specific goal in mind so that they can give you the help and the resources that you need in order to achieve your career goals, right? So it's a win-win. Okay. So, um, Unless anyone has any other question before we wrap up right on time. <laughs> My suggestion is take your time with that workbook, you know, um, take your, take, stick yourself through the entire, you know, the questions so that you thought through what you want. And if you want help, if you want expert guidance to see yourself all the way through and you want, you just want to get it done a lot easier, right? You want to bypass the noise and you want to bypass the pitfalls and you want to make sure that you're on the trajectory of growth in a way that is right for you, right? Uh, then I invite you to book that free consultation with me 
today. You're so welcome. <laughs> and again, if you know you want to schedule this discovery session, um, all you have to do is follow that link. There'll be questions. You answer the questions. You pick a time. And if you don't see a time that works for you, just send me an email, jamie at jamieleecoach.com. We'll find a time that works for you. We'll make it work. All right, I'll talk to you soon.